the first tournament I played in was at Georgia State, and I was 14 years old, and it was at Druid Hills in Atlanta. And that night, I went home, and I was practically in tears. And I qualified, I got in the championship flight. I was the last one in the championship flight, shot 92. And Dad said, what's the matter with you? And I said, well, they got a thing on there called a sand trap. And I'd never seen one before, because Dad didn't have any bunkers on his course, thinking that that would keep the flow, you know, public golf course, so forth. Well, anyway, he built me a sandbox and put it behind a granite boulder and said, now get over it. And so that was my experience of learning. And the most lofted club I had was a seven iron. So I learned to get out of bunkers originally with a seven iron, but Joanne Carna, Meg Mallon, Kari Webb, and Beth Daniel, and I were members of Pine Tree. We were, it just so happened one day we were all out on the practice tee. And I made some wisecrack. I said, I'll bet you a buck I can get closer in this practice bunker, from this practice bunker to that pin than you all can with wedges. When, when I'll use my seven iron. Of course, they jumped on me like a fleas on a hound dog. And of course, being the senior, go right ahead, Louise. Well, I stoned it like this. About a foot away. Well, they didn't come close, even. Well, we gotta have a playoff. I said, no, I just said, so I took their money and ran. So, <laughs> I made them pay me. Well, I think the fact that I was on the Curtis Cup team and went to England and won the British, and we won the Cup matches that year, and we were the first team, Curtis Cup team, after the war. And uh, I never realized how much they went through. And that, I think I grew up a lot right then. But when we, when we were in London and seeing those buildings being held up with scaffolding and still smell the stench of burned out places and I don't know how it did. And it was, they, they didn't have any food and we were told, because we went over on the ship and came back on the ship, in our foot lockers to take any, if we had any extra space to take canned food, and, and like ham and things like, which we did. And I never forget, I offered a piece of gum to one of the kids, the, one of the British girls, and she said, what is it? And well, I mean, and, and it, it's amazing what, and as I said, I think I grew up right then. That was in 1948. And uh, so I came back and, and I was still an amateur, obviously. And that was when the manufacturers decided that women's golf was a coming thing. And all of the, uh, Manufacturers wanted me on the staff, and so Dad suggested, he, having had some experience in athletics that way, he said you might want to think about McGregor because they don't have a woman, and you would be the senior member, which I, and that's what I did, and he. Uh, we went to Cincinnati, where the, the home office of McGregor in those days, and the president and CEO. Uh, it, anyway, they we signed the contract, and Dad said, "Now I think she," and I would never have even thought of this. He said, "I think she deserves a bonus with everything she's done," and so they gave me some more money. I thought, "Well, look." Biggest check I'd ever seen. It was it was a different era. People were nicer, and uh, one thing 
and that I've appreciated more as much, if not more than anything. It's amazing how many women have come up to me, and men too, but mostly women, that said, we really appreciate what you've done for women, not just in golf, just what you've done. Anyway, we're playing at Bobby Jones. A rain shower came up, and of course you run for the shelters they have around. And they were fixed, built so that they were kind of low. And I ducked down to go under it, and I ran head into the sky. Knocked him down, knocked me down, and it was back. I didn't know who it was at that point. And of course, he, you all right? He died. Anyway, the shower was open. He went his way, and I went my way. And when we got through playing golf, I was in the pro shop talking to Billy Wilson, the pro. And he said, oh, by the way, I've got a young flyer here. He, he said, are you going back to the office? And I said, yeah. He said he needs a ride downtown. He was here, he'd been ferrying some planes in or something to the air base there, uh, a plane. And he was staying at the Ansley Hotel. And he said, would you mind dropping him off? And I said, no. And it was this guy. So that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Then he wrote me and said, why don't you come over here and we'll get married? Because he was about to get out of, come home or whatever. And we can spend our honeymoon here and then come home. Well, when I broached the subject to mother, I thought she was going to have a hissy fit. In fact, she did have a hissy fit. I was working for Gulf Oil Corporation in Atlanta as a file clerk. I mean, I was just out of high school. And uh, I went up, to, had a week's vacation. I went to Memphis and played in the Women's Southern and won it. And I beat a lady in the finals called Peg Channel, named Peg Channel. And she was from Dallas. And I got a phone call that was in the spring, sometime during that summer, and said, Louise, I hate to tell you this, and said, I'm going to be honest with you. I have put together an exhibition in Dallas with. Uh, Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, and Johnny Weissmuller from the American Red Cross, and Babe Zaharias. And Babe called her and said, I have to have a little pocket change. Well, it, there was no money supposed to be involved, and, and uh, Peg said, we can't pay anything. This is all for charity. Well, it wound up, she called me and asked me to come if I would substitute. And uh, as it turned out, uh, I flew out there on the first plane trip I'd ever made, and I met C.E. Woolman, who, who started Delta Airlines. And the chief pilot, they only had one pilot, was George Sheely. Anyway, get to Dallas, and I met these guys. And I'm starstruck as hell. I mean, I'm 17 years old, and, and uh, anyway, being the woman, the, the girl, or whatever, they, I hit first. And I happened to catch one right on the screws. Must have hit it out there about 250. And Bob jumped, whoa, he said, or something like that, and started to walk. And Bing said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to get a skirt. What do you think? So anyway. That's what happened, and that's how I met them. And then Bob was assigned to Berkeley Air Force Base in Mobile, Alabama. And any time he was in the southeast quadrant or under the auspices of where Berkeley would be flying him around, he told him he wanted me with him to play in the golf exhibitions. And that's how I got to know the Hopes. The Bushes, uh, they would spend their honeymoon at Sea Island, 
And on their 50th anniversary, before then I had met them because they would come back, they would come in there for vacation. And the kids rented a house and, and uh, so I just, I just fell into a lot of it. And, but, and that, that Barbara Bush is something on a stick, I'll tell you. And Barbara is, is writing the foreword for my book. So that'll be nice, and uh, it's unfortunate that he's not as well as he could be at this point, too. She seems to be doing pretty well. I talked to her recently. They're in Kenny Buckport right now. But uh, I'm trying to think, and Dinah Shore, of course, we're starting the tournament out there. And I just can't think of all the various and sundry people that, at the Les Brown, the, the orchestra leader, and, and Skinny Ennis, another one, Jerry Colonna. Uh, I've, been, I've been blessed, I really have, I've had a good life.